Today I wanted to do the growing up Asian American tag. I think it's also called the Asian tag. I've seen a few other Asian American YouTubers do this tag before and I haven't seen quite as many adoptees do this. So I wanted to add my perspective just because I think that when you're talking about Asian American identity, it's already encompassing a great deal of different ethnic subgroups, languages, cultures, immigration stories. And I think that when you're adding on the layer of being an adoptee, perspective on what it means to be Asian American, it adds a little bit more complication. And with all of that said, let's get into the tag. Okay, first question. What is your ethnicity? So I am Chinese. I was specifically born in Hunan province in southern China and I was adopted when I was nine months old and brought to the United States and grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I identify as Chinese American. Okay, second question. Which generation are you? So this already gets a little bit different because I'm technically first generation American. If you're thinking of my birth family, I was the first of a quote unquote foreign born family who attained American citizenship. And if you're thinking of my adoptive family and I am technically not a first generation American. So it's very confusing because even though I identify as a first generation American, the experiences that I have had being first gen have been very different than like the stereotypical or prototypical experience as commonly associated with first generation immigrants. What was your first language? Uh, so my first language was English and that was because I grew up in the United States and my parents are white American so we spoke English at home and that is you know already one of the ways that I think my immigration and being first gen experience maybe varies from other people who are first gen. Okay, next question. When is the first experience where you felt that demarcation of being a minority or being different? So this happened pretty early on for me because it was very obvious that I didn't look like my parents. And so for me, at least this raised questions about like why that was the case because when you're at school and you see parents picking up their kids usually they look very similar so for me at least you know my parents never tried to make it seem as though they didn't see color um they definitely did say like oh well we love you regardless of whether or not you know you're biologically related to us but they never they never said oh you're the same or that dismiss you know the fact that i was chinese and like pretend that i was white so i think from a pretty early age i like knew i was different but also, this came from, you know, being out with them a lot of times and people not really knowing who I was when I was with them. I think my mom has told me stories where she was with me and I called her mom and people just have kind of like looked at us like, is that girl okay? At a pretty early age, I was always observing these things and kind of reconciling these things and what it meant. Then there was also like a lot of othering, I think, as related to my Chinese identity, which happened when I was in my Chinese immersion school. And I know I've talked about this in like my video where I was going over my experience learning manner and so I'll just like leave this here if you want to hear more about that. Were you always proud of your heritage or was there a time you rejected it? So I definitely wasn't always proud of my heritage. This is also made more complicated by the fact that I have a lot of questions over what my heritage actually is and what does it actually mean to be Chinese because I think that there's a lot of again stereotypical prototypical ideas of what it means to be Chinese and a lot of this is kind of from a western gaze like a white western gaze and wrapped up in the model minority myth and so you know like to what extent is that actually like my heritage so I think to answer this at least no I was not always proud of my heritage I definitely went through phase phases in middle school to high school and even college to a certain extent where I was kind of ashamed of being Chinese. One, because I knew it wasn't cool, but two, also because I felt like I didn't match a lot of the expectations of what it meant to be Asian and what it meant to be Chinese. So I felt a lot of kind of shame around that too. There's so many different ways for you to be Chinese. What are some stereotypes that you struggle with? So. I think a lot of what falls under the model minority myth applies to me. I recognize that not every Asian American, not every Chinese American even necessarily has access to the model, model minority myth and the kind of positive stereotypes that are associated with the model minority myth. Like one example is math. There's this kind of idea that all Asians are like super genius like math whizzes and I just am not like I'm not horrible at math but I wouldn't say I'm amazing at it and so I've had multiple people tell me like oh shouldn't you be 
like, shouldn't you be good at math? Or like, you're really bad at math for an Asian. So there's kind of like that element to it. And also same thing with like test scores. I did not do well on like standardized testing. There are types around like success and academics that I just like don't really fall into, actually don't fit them. <laughs> and then that misfit is kind of confusing for people. Another thing that I struggle with I think is the general fetishization of like Asian American women. So there's been multiple times I think like where I've interacted with not only white men but usually they're white men where they've made comments that are just really inappropriate and when I was dating or just like when I was out being always very wary of like men who had yellow fever and just always wondering right if like romantic interests were because they liked me or if it was just because I was Asian or just because I was Chinese and then the stereotypes associated with Chinese women being like exotic or being submissive and that kind of thing. But when I was younger a lot of the stereotypes were more surface level and a little bit maybe a little bit more superficial and now I think my biggest frustrations around this are really around like politics and voice and identity and I think that a lot of times people think that Asian Americans are like not political or that they're very kind of meek and not confident and I think there's a lot to you know there's a lot to unpack there lately I think one of the pieces of the stereotype that I've really struggled with is that oftentimes in conversations around like race and racism and identity and politics people tend to like not even think about Asian Americans. People don't even think that Asian Americans have opinions on this. They don't think that Asian Americans have a stake in it. And so that is something that I've recently, at least especially, strongly disliked about the stereotype. That just like Asian Americans are kind of like off to the side and silent and like who cares what they think. Can you speak your language? Uh, yes, I can speak Mandarin, but I will say that my birth parents probably didn't speak Mandarin, or if they did, they didn't speak it very well. They probably spoke whatever dialect that was associated with the, the area that I grew up, that I was born in. How has being Asian American affected your relationship with your parents? So this has definitely impacted our relationship fairly, a pretty decent amount, I think. When I was younger, at least, like, I didn't necessarily have the language to talk about a lot of the things that I was feeling or a lot of what I was experiencing and so that was we maybe talked about it a little bit less when I was younger. As I've gotten older I think that I have definitely found more of the language to talk about a lot of this with my parents and I'm very grateful that they are receptive to listening even if they can't fully understand what I'm saying or what I'm talking about they are still like always willing to listen to me and usually very understanding and like sympathetic. So that has been really appreciated because I know that not every adoptee has that relationship with their adoptive parents. Another way that this has changed is that when I was younger, I think my parents, especially my mom, really wanted me to learn more about my Chinese culture and like heritage and like really heavily pushed me towards that, which I am, you know, grateful for. But I think that, you know, when I was younger, again, feelings of shame and not being cool or whatever and so I kind of rejected it a little bit so you had like a parent-child conflict where she was really wanting me to kind of engage more in Chinese culture and I was like heavily leaning away from it. I remember feeling very annoyed at them when I was younger that they kept trying to get me to do all these things that I didn't want to do and now as I'm like being older I am ultimately grateful for it which sounds very cliche. How do you feel about your heritage now? Do you identify with it? So I definitely feel a lot better about my heritage, I think. I went through feelings of kind of imposter syndrome around my Asian American identity, and I still feel that from time to time. My relationship with my Chinese identity has definitely improved over the past, I really wanna say like two to three years especially. I feel less insecure, I think, in who I am. I think for the first time in a very long time, if not ever, I have wanted to really engage with and be involved with my Asian American, my Chinese American heritage. Last question, what is your favorite thing about being Asian American or whatever your heritage is? So for me at least, I think there's a lot of things I really like about it. Being bicultural, honestly you could even argue like tri-cultural to a certain extent. 
Being bicultural is definitely confusing and it raises a lot of questions, at least for me, but I think it's also really an asset too because it help, like I'm able to understand lots of different perspectives and navigate lots of different spaces. I think, and also has given me a lot more perspective and understanding as it relates to other cultures, customs and, and nationalities as well. So that's the end of the tag. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I would love to know, you know, if you identify as Asian American or honestly just whatever your heritage is, I would love to know how you would kind of respond to some of these questions. I wanna wish everyone a happy Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I hope that you have a great rest of your weekend and I will talk to you in the next one.